Hey planners, it's Tay of Shantae Plans and welcome back to my YouTube channel. And hello, welcome to my face. Normally you guys are just looking at my hands, but hi, this is me. <laughs> so, um, and I think I look completely different from my profile picture because this is my profile picture. I have like those cr curly crochet braids in. This is just my hair um, and my hair straightened. Normally my hair is curly because I, I have natural hair, but anyways, also the wind massively windy today uh, and the wind tossed my hair around like crazy so we're, we're just gonna ignore the little bit of frizziness that's happening just proceed with this video anyways alrighty now that I've taken like a really long rambly time of getting to the point of this video let's get to the point of this video I wanted to share um, my ex experience in going to go wild and share some tips because I was asked by um, Crystal who is Prissy planning on Instagram Hey girl, uh, to share what my experience was like in going to go wild um, for people who are considering going for the first time and trying to think about um, what what it what all that entails. So, um, my first tip would be to make sure you're following Wild for Planners on Instagram and join the Facebook group. Uh, I feel like especially as it gets closer and closer to go wild. Being a part of that Facebook group is gonna be really important because there's so much great and helpful information in there and tips from people who've gone before. You'll find people who are in your area that you can connect with before you even get to the event. There, there's so much great information in that Facebook group and I, I think it's a wonderful resource. So I highly recommend um, following them on Instagram to stay aware of what's going on and following on and joining that Facebook group. Um, if you see me continuously looking down, I made myself notes um, so that I would remember everything I wanted to say in this video. So that's, that's why I keep looking down. Um, next, buying your tickets. So um, the tickets go on sale in two groups. They have uh, tickets sales for alumni, which usually happens first, um, and they open the tickets up to people who've been to go out first, um, and then they open it up to the general public. This um, last year, they did that in January. I think it was January 21st. Um, and in the um, Facebook group, they post and let you know the date and time that those tickets are gonna go live. And so that's really important because I was, I literally uh, took the morning off from work. I, I told my manager I was gonna be coming in late because I wanted to be sitting at home at my computer as soon as those tickets went on sale. They, they sold out in a matter of hours. Uh, so you definitely want to be prepared and ready. Um, the other thing that happened when I was purchasing my ticket um, I, I went through, um, jumped on the moment they said the tickets were available. And as I was um, checking out, it said I was on the wait list. And so I went back to the Facebook group and everyone was posting in there because everyone was having that same experience because there were so many people trying to purchase tickets at the same time. It was dumping a lot of people onto a wait list. And what, um, what they were saying in the messaging group in the Facebook group was, until an admin says those tickets are sold out, you keep trying um and so i was like okay i'm gonna try again then uh and so and that's why i say being in that facebook group is so helpful so i went back purchased my ticket again and then i was able to go back to the facebook group and let them know hey i was able to purchase the ticket got the ticket and then i'm also on the wait list which hadn't i had not been charged for that yet yeah so i just went back and i wanted them to take me off the wait list because i didn't want to accidentally be charged twice um which Let's talk about the pricing of the tickets. So tickets for Go Wild are $500 and taxes and everything, it does come out to a little bit over $500. I wanna say, I think it was about 530 bucks total um, that I spent on tickets. You do have the option of paying that in two sets of, in two payments. And so, um, or you can pay it in one lump sum. And so um, that's helpful. So, so that ticket covers the event. Um, does not cover your travel expenses. Um, so you'll also wanna make sure you're budgeting for your flight, uh, for any type of shuttle or Uber or Lyft that you're gonna need to get from the airport to the hotel or get around from the hotel to any other events and things that you, and activities you wanna do uh, while you're at the event. Um, and then also make sure you're budgeting for food um, because those are the, the primary expenses that you're going to run into. It is, uh, a jam-packed and very fun event, including um, some really great fun social activities, the, the welcome party with the karaoke is so much fun, and then the um, final party on the, on the last night is a lot of fun as well. So I feel like even if you're not trying to do a bunch of um, 
extra social things that cost a lot of money outside of the event. There are activities built into the events uh, on two of the days, evening activities, um, where you'll be able to enjoy hanging out and having fun in, in a more of a party atmosphere in addition to the conference. So if you're wanting to do something um, that's more of a fun activity in addition to the conference. It doesn't necessarily have to be an additional expense. My tip for packing for the event is that you want to bring two pieces of, of luggage at minimum. And if you're um, someone who's bringing um, a lot of swag to give away um, as like swap gifts or if you're a shop owner and you're wanting to bring things to hand out, you may need even more luggage than two pieces. But uh, for myself being just, you know, a regular planner girl who was going, I had a, a few gifts um, that I wanted to give out to like my roommates and things like that. Um, but I didn't have too, too much that I needed to bring with me to the event, but you want to bring one full large size suitcase that is going to be empty. Um, even if you're bringing things to give away for the event, that's fine because you'll have given them away by the time the event is over and you're packing up to go home. You're going to want a full size suitcase to bring home all of the swag that you're going to get and then pack all of your personal items and your clothes and everything like that in a carry-on size suitcase. And that way you'll be ready for the event. Um, you, you're going to need two pieces of luggage. So... <laughs> at minimum because um, I had all of my stuff in my carry-on and then my large suitcase I brought home was full of swag um, so I highly recommend at minimum two pieces of luggage one of which is just empty and speaking of roommates because I mentioned roommate gifts um, as I was saying before the expenses for um, your lodging because your ticket doesn't cover the hotel stay. Uh, for me, what I uh, what I decided was to have roommates to help cut down on the cost of that, and it worked out really wonderfully. Although the process of getting a roommate in my head seemed like such a gamble, and I'm I'm really grateful that it worked out as well as it did. Um, when you when the tickets go on sale and, and people have purchased their tickets, what gets created is a private face group. Facebook group specifically for the people who are going to be attending the event. So in addition to the regular Planners Gone Wild Facebook group, there was a Planners Gone Wild Vegas 2019 Facebook group that you get invited to once you've purchased a ticket. Um, and so in joining that group, there's a thread that will be created in that group for people who are searching for roommates. So even if it's your first time going to the event, you're going by yourself, you don't know anyone, you haven't met anyone, which was the situation that I was in. I was going all by myself. Um, I was able to meet and connect and it almost feels like you're filling out like a dating profile and basically what you're doing in the comment section of that thread is just, you know, describing yourself, you know, uh, these are my likes, these are my dislikes. Um, I, I do drink, I don't drink, I'm a social drinker, I, I snore, um, I'm going to be staying from, um, you know, Wednesday to Sunday, I'm, I'm looking for one roommate, I'm looking for two, I'm looking for however many. Um, and so I ended up having three roommates. Um, so we split the cost of the room four ways, which worked out fantastically, it really cut down on the price of it for me, it made it very affordable, and I ended up with the most amazing roommates I was so grateful. They were the sweetest, most wonderful ladies. And we were all shocked. We, we talked about it the entire trip. We were like, oh my God, it was such a gamble. But, you know, we clicked and it was wonderful. And after we um, um, met up on that Facebook group and decided to become roommates, we, just, we created our own private Facebook messenger group. And we had been chatting from like January all the way leading up to the event in May. And so um, even though we hadn't met, we had been talking and we'd been video chatting. And so we'd had a chance to see each other and, and talk to each other and get a sense of our personalities. So by the time we got to the trip, having those roommates there and then um, because everyone almost, it almost seems like everyone's kind of coming a little bit on their own to go out and then you'll see certain people who you know they have their their groups of friends or people who've attended the event before and they've made connections um and for me having my roommates with me i was was a great sense of comfort because you have that built-in social group and so um when it was time to go out to eat or as we were going from event to event and and, and walking around and doing things it was really nice having a group of people and a group of friends that i already had with me and um and so uh, I really did enjoy and I was so glad I decided to go the roommate route instead of just trying to go on my own because I think it, I would have been a lot more introverted had I done it, had I done it that way. What to wear? Um, for 
this is gonna vary depending on the city that it's in. And that's the thing about Go Wild because they move from different cities. Um, they move to a different city each year. Um, this year, because I knew it was gonna be in Vegas, I live in California, so I'm very familiar with and have been to Vegas pretty often in my life. Um, and so I knew I wanted to have very casual, very comfortable attire during the day for the conference. And then I wanted to bring a couple of um, outfits for um, for like evening partying type going out outfits. Um, my roommates and I had planned to go out and see a show in Vegas one night. So I knew we needed an outfit for that. Um, kind of get a sense of what your schedule is and what you're going to be doing. Know that during the day at the conference, you can be very, very casual. Tennis shoes, yoga pants, shorts, t-shirt. Um, you're going to get a go wild t-shirt when you get to the events and when you register. Um, so uh, on one of the days I wore that t-shirt. Um, there's going to be, you know, pop-up shops with merchandise that you can pick up. I picked up an Erin Condren t-shirt that I actually ended up wearing to uh, the Planjama party uh, along with my PJs and it was super cute, uh, which I, I, when I was packing, I hadn't thought about um, buying a t-shirt for Planjama, but it just happened that, you know, I was at the shop and I, I liked the t-shirt and bought it and I was like, oh, I can wear this for Planjama. This will be fun. Uh, so um, I would say definitely during the day. Um, really casual attire because you're just going to be, you know, sitting in the conference, meeting friends, but also keep in mind that you want casual cute because there's also going to be quite a bit of pictures. And so um, it was, I, I um, would say, you know, casual, comfortable, but maybe, you know, a fun, brightly colored top or something like that uh, because you're going to be taking a lot of pictures. Another tip I would recommend, they created an app and um, I thought the app was really wonderful and useful uh, because you would get um, real-time notifications on the app. Definitely download that app, use it, pay attention to the notifications. Um, particularly on the day of Plan Jam, I wish I had been paying a little bit more attention to what was happening on the app because uh, on that day they were offering like uh, face painting and you could have little jewels put on your face and then they were doing glitter and hairspray in people's hair, which I wasn't interested in putting a bunch of glitter in my hair that I would have never gotten out but um but I did I did want to get um face painting and so by the time I realized they were doing the face painting and, and the jewels and stuff like that um it was too late and I, they had started at three o'clock and they ran from three to seven doing that um for the attendees and i got there at like 6 30 and so you know i was standing in line and, and they they had to let us know we're so sorry guys but we're just not going to be able to get to everyone because we're running out of time and they had to be out of that space by seven and so um had i been paying attention to the notifications i could have gotten there earlier and i would have been able to enjoy ha having that done um but highly recommend um download the app pay attention to the notifications uh the um, sponsored tables on the first day. So um, the the tables, seeing those tables on Instagram is what inspired me and made me know. I was like, oh my God, I have to go to Go Wild. That was what um, caught my attention and brought and and I was like, oh my God, this conference looks amazing. So, and I feel like a lot of people have that response to seeing the sponsored tables on um, Instagram posts. Uh, that happens on the first day of the conference and it, you're, the tables are not assigned, so literally you're going to get in line and as you're coming into the room um, that day, you, you're just gonna pick and decide where you wanna sit down. My recommendation is this, because people started lining up at 2 a.m. because they you know, wanted to get in the room first and wanted to choose and decide where they wanted to sit. I had no intention of getting up at 2 a.m. to sit in a line, but I do wish I had gotten up and gone down there earlier than I did. Um, because I wasn't disappointed with the table that I sat at, but there were a few other tables that I specifically did want to sit at. And by the time I got to them, there just wasn't room. And so um, I feel like this, uh, I <laughs> my initial thought was, oh, I'm just, I'm just not at that place in my life where the thought of sitting in a line and sitting on the ground for hours waiting to, to go walk into a room and I was like I'm too old and I just know that was my thought and that was why I didn't but as I look back on it now um my thought is this 
It was my first time going to this event. I was super excited and I had specific tables in mind that I wanted to sit at. And knowing those three things about myself, even if I wasn't willing to get up at 2 a.m., I could have got up at four, I could have got up at five, at six, and gone down and gotten in line. And so for me, I feel like I let myself down a little bit because I wasn't a little bit more. I didn't go down until, no, I did go down at six. Okay, I did go down at six, so, um, and even then, uh, there were tons of people still behind me in line, but there were tons of people in front of me. And so um, there, there were quite a few tables that I didn't get a chance to sit at. And it is kind of, it's overwhelming in the best way is what I kept saying uh, the entire time I was at the conference because there's so much coming at you. You just don't know where to start. It is literally like kid in a candy store craziness because everything everything looks amazing everything looks so much fun and you just don't know which way you're going you're going in a million directions at once and it's heaven it's wonderful um so that it, it truly was like overwhelming in the best way but there's so much to take in there's so much to see and so you're like trying to take it all in trying to figure out where you want to sit down it, it, it's amazing but also I think what's important to understand no matter what table you sit at you're going to get some amazing things on your table and then you're going to get tons of other swag that they just keep bringing in and keep bringing in and keep bringing in to the point where you're just overwhelmed and grateful because it's incredible so um, no matter where you sit every seat is a great seat but if you are specifically knowing that you know there are a few sponsored tables that you have in mind that you really like to sit at or you're particular about wanting to sit somewhere do yourself a favor get up go ahead and get in that line because it's going to start early and just be willing to um to get in there and go after what you want i guess uh my last tip um uh, would be pertaining to swag um is keep yourself organized Particularly if you do decide to have roommates for this for the event, um, one of the things that I thought we all did really well, especially because in, in for my situation there were four of us in one room, and so we all kind of staked out our our space in the room because you're going to have a lot of swag that's exactly the same, and so you want to keep yourself organized. You want to make sure you're putting your stuff in one spot or putting yourself away. Um, which kid, honestly, for me, it was like, I didn't really fully pack up everything until the last day, but I kept putting my stuff in the same closet, in the same space. Um, and so that way, um, everything was organized and no one's stuff got mixed up. So um, be mindful of that, particularly if you have roommates, because um, you don't want to, to create any trauma or anything like that with mixing up your stuff or coming home and realizing you forgot or left something. Uh, that would really suck. So, And I would also say uh, another tip, be to talk to people. One of the things I think um, I found to be so very common and I wonder if maybe it's just something that goes with the type of personality of people that are just drawn to this hobby itself um, because most of the ladies, um, most of the ladies who were attending Go Wild all kind of kept echoing the same sentiment that they're very introverted people and everyone was really shy to, you know, be, to go up and speak to other people. And that was me, that, that is me, not was me, is me. I am not a go up to people and start a conversation type person. Uh, and I remember like the second day um, and um, oh, her name is Nay and I, I believe her shop is like Nay Designs. I feel so bad because I'm forgetting the name of her shop, um, but I, I will have it listed in the description box. She was such a sweetheart and she has no idea how happy she made me simply because she just started talking to me. <laughs> and so we were sitting at the table and she just like started up a conversation with me and it was so wonderful and I was so grateful. Um, the same with um, Nikki Plans and um, Nikki from Nikki Plans and Alicia from Sadie Stickers, Lauren from Rose Colored Days. Um, the first day the table that I was sitting at, I didn't know any of the ladies who were sitting with me and they were all really nice and wonderful. And in the morning session, we didn't really speak to each other very much. And I think all, all of us were feeling a little bit shy. In the afternoon, um, we did start talking a little bit more at that table, which was great. Um, 
and then on um, the second day the, the ladies at that table it was definitely it felt a lot more you know chatty and more fun and so um I think there is something very naturally introverted about so many people in this community um and this is a tip to myself as to the uh, in addition to the rest of you guys because it was really a push out of my comfort zone and I was trying to make myself be more of a conversation starter which I just naturally am not um but you know it's as simple as because everyone's meeting everyone you know asking people's names sharing your name and where you're from and and um how how you decided to come to the event and and, and what brought you here and what you're enjoying so far um and finding out that you know there's there's so many more things that we all have in common and it was really truly a wonderful event i had the best time i I, I, I think it was one of the best experiences of my life and I, I'm so grateful that I got a chance to attend. It was wonderful. So that is pretty much all I have to say about Go Wild. I really hope these tips were helpful for you guys. If you're considering going to um, Go Wild, I, I, I hope that this was helpful. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're having an amazing day and I will see you next video.